Okay, guys, so today we are going over assistive devices and the measurements for them. So there's a variety of different assistive devices that show up on the boards. Most of them are going to be related to wheelchairs or crutches or canes, um, so, and walkers. So I have everything in here that is going to be covered for the boards, so let's get started. So assistive devices and their measurements for them. So let's start with wheelchairs. So these are pictures from uh, Google and they're from a wiki how of how to measure a wheelchair. So today, um, so with wheelchairs, this is probably the most common thing that's gonna show up on the boards is you're gonna have a situation where someone's measuring a wheelchair and either something's going wrong where the patient is, maybe it's too wide, it's too narrow, there's chafing on the posterior and distal by because the wheelchair is fitted wrong, something along those lines. So here are the measurements today to make sure that we are measuring these wheelchairs correctly and that none of these uh, complications are happening with these patients. So we'll start with seat height. So this is from the heel or the floor to the popliteal fold. And so you're going to measure from the heel to the popliteal fold and you're going to add two inches. This is so then the patient is off the floor and their feet aren't dragging on the floor. That's why you add those two inches. And a, a case that would differ from this is if they had, I believe it's called a hemi wheelchair. And that is for people who need to use the floor to propel themselves forward. So they need to scoot along the floor. So in that case, you wouldn't be adding in two inches. But for the standard wheelchair, you need to add two inches after you measure from the heel to the popliteal fold and that knee crease. The average for people is going to be between 19.5 and 20.5 inches. And that's just for the standard adult. So moving on to seat depth, you're gonna measure from the most posterior aspect of the patient. So that's either where their butt is or if it's part of like, however far back, it's probably going to be their butt. So you're gonna, for seat depth, you're gonna measure from the most posterior aspect of the buttocks to the popliteal fold. So where we were measuring before for the seat height, you're going to measure that far and then you're going to subtract two inches. And this is so then there's no chafing on the distal thigh and that they're not, think about when you're sitting in a chair, if the chair is all the way up into your like knees and in the back of your popliteal space, it's very uncomfortable and it puts a lot of pressure on the distal thighs. That's why you wanna subtract two inches so they're kind of off a little bit and they also have a little bit more mobility for them. The average for this is around 16 inches. So for seat width, this is the most, like the widest part of their hips, which could either be parts of their thigh or it could be the, the hips themselves, whatever the widest part of the patient is as they're sitting down in the chair, that's where you're measuring from. You're gonna, and so then you're going to add two inches. So for seat width, you're going to add two inches. The average for this is 18 inches and, um, you're going to be adding those two inches so then the patient has room to like wiggle around and you're going to make sure that they are not ch like chafing up against the sides of the wheelchair so then they can actually propel themselves and they're not sitting uncomfortable because a lot of our patients in wheelchairs don't move that much and we don't want them developing any sort of pressure sores. So seat width, widest part of the hips, add two inches. The next thing I'm gonna talk about is back height of the wheelchair. So this is how far the wheelchair's back goes up their body. You're going to go all the way up from, you're going to measure from wherever they're sitting on the seat. You're going to measure from the seat all the way up to the floor of the axilla, so the very bottom part of their armpit. Then you're going to subtract four inches. This is so then the patient has room to move around and they're not running into the seat as they're trying to twist behind them to give them some more independence. So they're not trying to twist behind them. So then they can have some more independence and freedom and mobility as they're navigating with that wheelchair. So back height, measure from the seat, the floor, measure from the seat to the floor of the axilla and subtract four inches. The average for this for a standard adult is going to be between 16 and 16 and a half inches. The last part for the wheelchair is the armrest height. Now, not every wheelchair is going to have an armrest, but I would say the majority of them do. And this is something you will need to know for the boards. So um, the armrest height is going to be, have the elbow flexed at 90 degrees. So it's like they're sitting there as if how we show our patients do like rows, like TheraBand rows. So they're gonna sit there at elbows flexed at 90 degrees and you're going to add one inch. This is so then they can kind of have their elbows sit up a little bit 
So then they're not like dragging them down and you don't want them too high. So that's why it's only an inch because you don't want their arms all their uh, shoulders all the way up into their ears. So the average for this is about nine inches above the chair seat. So you're going to measure from the seat of the chair to where their elbow is flexed at 90 degrees. Now it is essential that all of these measurements are done correctly to make sure that the patient can maneuver their wheelchair independently without causing those pressure sores. So this also allows them to be as independent as possible because we don't want our patients not being able to go anywhere because their wheelchair is fitted wrong. They're getting pressure sores. They're getting infected. That's dangerous. And then we also want to make sure that they're able to be as independent as, as possible because a lot of our patients, especially those who are using a manual wheelchair for because they have a spinal cord injury, this is how they get around. This is how they go to the grocery store. This is how they go to their doctor's appointments, how they go to their friend's house, to the mall, wherever they're going. This, the wheelchair is how they move around and navigate their world. So the measurements need to be correct for them so that they are not getting any additional problems and that we're keeping them out there being healthy to the maximum level of function that they can be. So moving on to a different type of um, assist advice, we have axillary crutches. So this is a great picture and this is from one, an NCLEX study page. Um, the, for axillary crutches, you're going to position the crutches, you're going to put them up under their shoulder, and you're going to position the crutch two inches to the side and six inches out in front. So I have this picture here. I mean, it's in centimeters, but you can kind of see how it's up a little bit and then out to the side. So um, this is so then it's not jamming up into their armpit. And then when they reach forward with the crutches, that it's not going so far away that they're slipping out. So Position the crutches six inches anteriorly and two inches laterally in front of the patient. And then while when the patient is in that position, then you can adjust the crutches height under their armpit. So you wanna make sure there's at least three fingers about under the axilla. So then they have a little bit of wiggle room there that it's not jamming up because if it jams up into their armpit, they could have some issues with the radial nerve getting entrapped up there and that'll cause the wrist drop because, you know, radial nerve has the posterior interosseus and then goes into the hand for wrist extension. So we want to make sure that it's not getting trapped up there and it's not jammed up there. So three finger widths, and that's about two inches if we're going off of the inches thing, because that's what the boards like to talk about is inches. So three finger widths is about two, three inches. So um, with that being said, when you're done measuring at the axilla area and then have it out front, then you're going to want to measure at the wrist. So I don't have a picture of this right here, but the hand should fall resting at their side. The wrist part around the ul ulnar styloid should be able to wrap around the handle grips of the crutch. So you might have to adjust it up and down on that because it has a couple settings. So making sure that you're adjusting that to that point. So then when they're sitting there and that the crutches are slightly in front of them, they're relaxed, their elbows are bent at about 20 to 25 degrees of flexion. So I have a picture in the next page that kind of shows. So this is a walker. So when you're measuring walker, same kind of thing. See how this patient here has their, um, their wrists relaxed and it's the top of the walker is right around that ulnar styloid. That's how it's going to be for the axillary crutches as well. And for pretty much all the rest of the assistive devices, it's going to that ulnar styloid to make sure that the uh, elbow is at 20 to 25 degrees of flexion. That's where we want to be with that. So for walkers, as I said before, the height is going to be where those wrists fall. So have them stand up to the best of their ability. A lot of our patients using walkers are kyphotic and hunched over, but standing up to the best of their ability, the walker will, should the walker handle should fall around that ulnar styloid. And then as they pick their hands up to put them on the walker, it should be about 20 to 25 degrees of elbow flexion. Any more and they're jamming their shoulders up which could cause impingement any less and they're hunching over, which is gonna cause more postural problems. So at the ulnar styloid with 20 to 25 degrees of flexion at the elbow. So cane, same kind of thing. I think my um, little box in the corner might be blocking this, but with that being said, with the cane, there is, the cane should be held in the uninvolved side. So if it's, uh, 
and obviously for upper extremity, if the upper extremity is involved, it's got to go on the other side, but for lower extremity as well. And I can talk about that in another video where I explain how to the different types of gait. So the two point, the three point, all that stuff. I can talk about that in another video. But for the cane, it should be in the uninvolved side. So if they have a knee replacement on the right side, cane should be on the left. Same rules as the walker where it wraps the ulnar styloid is going to be around um, where the, when you have the hand rested at the side, the ulnar styloid is that is where the handle is going to be. So with that being said, then as they bend their elbow, it's going to be at that 20 to 25 degrees of flexion. Same rules as the walker. Don't want the elbow, don't want the shoulder jammed up. And you don't want them to be hunched over leaning to that side because that's going to cause problems with their posture. And you don't want them to be becoming weak on one side because they're leaning too far over. So when it comes to a quad cane, so I have a picture of the quad cane on the right here. So when you have a quad cane, a lot of them are going to have longer legs on one side. Some of them might be just completely even. Some of them are those like hurricanes that just stand up by themselves and they're like really small. But you can see on this patient that they have longer legs on this. You want the longer legs to face out. So let's say it's the patient with the right um, knee replacement. They have the cane on the left side with the uh, long legs sticking out. So that's the thing with the quad cane. You just have to be careful about that to make sure that the patient isn't tripping over themselves. So same thing right here, this picture right at the wrist joint. And that's how you're going to be measuring for canes. So there's no subtracting, adding, or anything. You're just eyeball in it. So loft strain crutches. So this is a less common thing, but it is definitely still something that shows up on the boards because we have a lot of patients that are going to be using this for their primary means of ambulation. So with loft strain crutches, the handle is the same as everything else at the ulnar styloid at 20 to 25 degrees of flexion at the elbow when they're holding onto it. The arm cuff is going to be located one to one and a half inches below the olecranon process. So this is, that's where you want to like subtract and make sure that it's not going to be causing any problems because if it's above the elbow, then they can't move their elbow and they've lost mobility. And if it's too far down, then they're leaning too far forward. So you want that armrest to be in an appropriate area. And the measuring position for this is the same as axillary crutches. So when we're measuring the axillary crutches, it's six inches out two to the side, same thing for loft strand crutches when you're measuring it six inches out two to the side. You just have to take into account these other components when you're measuring for a loft strand crutch. So last thing today is the sample question. A physical therapist assistant is measuring a patient with the C7 Asia scale A spinal cord injury for a wheelchair. The width of the patient's thighs and buttocks at the, the width of the patient's the width of the patient's thighs and buttocks is 14 inches. What would be the appropriate seat width for this patient? We have 12, 14, 16, and 18. And these are all in inches. So I'll give you a minute to think about that. All right, guys, so the answer is the answer is C, 16 inches. So this is because when you're measuring a patient's um, seat width, you're going to measure at the widest aspect of their thighs, and then you're going to add two inches to make sure that they're not chafing against the sides of the wheelchair, and you don't want to be subtracting because that'll make it even more chafing. You don't want it to be the same because then they're going to get squished in there. 16 is good because then it's wide enough that they can move around a little bit. They're not squished in. They're not going to get any sort of pressure sores or problems like that. And then 18 would start getting too wide for this patient. And if it gets too wide, they're going to have issues propelling the wheelchair because I think their arms are going to be all the way out to the side and they can't really reach. So 16 is the best answer for this patient who has a width that they've measured of 14 inches. So thanks for joining me today, guys. I appreciate it. I don't think I see any comments. So I will let you guys go. So thanks for joining today, guys. Bye.